I assume you all can see see the screen, okay? So this is this is an extremely important the ISL model in the goods and financial markets is an extremely important copy. So I want you to pay careful attention and and, and focus. And we're going to look. The first thing we're going to do is to is to derive the uh, the, the, the IS curve. And before that, some concepts that we need to understand. So we need to what is the impact of interest rates on the demand for goods and services and the equilibrium level of income? What is the impact of interest rates on the demand for goods and the level of income and output Y? We know that your demand for goods Z is equal to C plus I plus G. Your C plus I plus D is your autonomous autonomous spending. C has two parts to it, and autonomous and induced. Investments have two parts to it, autonomous and induced, and government has only one part. Government is entirely autonomous or exogenous. How does I affect the above variables? Consumption. If, you're in, if your interest rates increase, the cost of credit will increase, demand decreases, and your consumption, your, your, your level of income and output will decrease. So there's a negative relationship between interest rates and consumption, and that makes sense. The higher the interest rates, the higher the cost of borrowing, therefore, demand for goods and services will decrease and consumption will decrease. What is the relation between investments and, and, in, 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 and interest rates? Here again, there's a negative relation between investments and interest rates. The higher the, inter, the, higher the interest rates, the lower the investments because of the high cost of borrowing, because of the high cost of borrowing. Remember, investors will need to, need to borrow money from commercial banks in order to finance their projects. And if the costs are high, they will defer that project until the interest rates come down. So here again, there's a negative relationship between investments and, and the interest rate. The third uh, autonomous component is, is government spending. Here yeah, also, a, a negative relationship in, exists between interest rates and government spending. A higher, because government spending will also, will also have to borrow money, right? From, probably from the Reserve Bank. But the, so what we're saying here is, there is a negative relationship between interest rates and government spending. The higher the interest rates, the lower the government spending is. And because the government will also be affected by the interest rate. Okay, let's look at this. Two factors that influence investment spending. The two factors that influence investment spending. One is your, your level of income and output, and the other is the interest rates. The two factors that, that, that affect investments you must know are, are your, your level of income and output, and your interest rates. And let's look at the, the impact of both. The first, let's look at the level of level of output. If there's an increase in production, there, there will be an, it automatically that will result in an increase in sales, and your investments will increase. So what, what we can say about investments and the level of income and output is that there is a positive relation between the two. And there's a positive relation between the two. In other words, if Y increases, investments will de increase also. If your Y decreases, investments will decrease. Then what is the relationship between investments and interest rates? And there's a negative relationship between the two because of the cost, the cost high cost of, because of the, because of the cost factor. You, as I mentioned just now, all investments require financing. Right? You want to open up a spa or shop, you, you will go to the bank to borrow money. And if you want to buy a big truck for, for, for business purposes, Right? You, you will go to the bank for financing. So, so therefore, your investments will depend on interest rates. So the, if the interest rates increase, you know that the cost of borrowing will increase, and therefore your investments will decrease. Because of the high cost of borrowing, investors will not defer the investments to a later date until the uh, interest rates come down. So interest and, and the converse is true. If your interest rates are low, if it, if it decreases, the investments will increase because of the low cost of borrowing. So this will induce firms to go and, in, and, and, and borrow the money from, from, from the commercial banks and go ahead with their projects. Then we come to something that's extremely important, the derivation of the IS curve. The derivation of the IS curve. The first thing we need to know, guys, what is the IS curve? Before we derive, what is the IS curve? The IS curve shows different combinations of interest rates and levels of output where the goods market is in equilibrium. So your IS curve shows different combinations of interest rates and the levels of output, income and output, Y, where the goods market is in equilibrium. The IS curve deals, uh, relates directly to the, to, to the real sector. 
right, in, 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 relation, in relation to the goods market. Combinations of interest rates and levels of income and output, where the goods market is in equivalent. That, that would tell you that this involves the IS curve, right? Goods market. It's also, you also need to note that the curve represents a goods market, and that at any point on the IS curve, goods market equilibrium exists. So any point on the IS curve indicates that there will be equilibrium in the goods market. It suggests that any point on the IS curve, the goods market is in equilibrium. So we have we have three diagrams on, on, on the screen. You're, you've got figure A, which, which represents your, your investment function, which is downward sloping from left to right. Figure B represents the goods market, where investment is a function of Y and I. Right, you have the goods function, a goods market, sorry, where investments is a function of Y and I. So investment has a positive relationship with Y and a negative relationship with interest rates. The third figure uh, shows us the IS curve, right? The final derivation of the IS curve. So remember in figure A, right, we, we measure interest rates on the vertical axis and we measure uh, the, the investment, your, your levels of investment on the horizontal axis. In figure B, we measure the, the, the demand for goods on, the, on, on Z on the vertical axis, and we have the level of income and output Y on the horizontal axis. In figure C, we, we look at the interest rates measured on the vertical axis and the level of income and output on the horizontal axis. So, so you must understand right, the, 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 the axis, what is being measured on, on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis for each of those three diagrams. To start the derivation of the IS curve, we will start with figure A, right, the investment function. When you're asked to derive the IS curve, we must know that we, we must start with the interest rate. The interest rate is the starting point in the derivation of the IS curve. It's something that you must know if you are asked this in the examination, right? When you derive, when you're asked to derive the IS curve, you must start with the interest rates. So we assume that the interest rate is high zero. And given that interest rate, the level of investment, the level of investment spending. Given, I, given interest rates I0, the level of investment is I0. If you take that line across to the investment function, you drop that line, then you get investment zero. You got that? Also, given interest rates I0, the corresponding, the corresponding demand for goods in figure B now is ZZ. Let me say that again. Given interest rate, given your interest rate I0, your level of investment is now I0, and the corresponding demand for goods in figure B is the ZZ diagram, uh, line, sorry, the ZZ line. And the ZZ line cuts the 45 degree line at point A, so point A is an equilibrium point. So we're looking at the activities in, the, in, 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 in figure A, and what is the impact of that on, on figure B? So at point A, there is your equilibrium point, you drop that line to the Y line, and there's your equilibrium level of income and Y, output Y. And remember, remember at point A, your, your, your demand for goods and services is equal to Y. So in, other, Z, in other words, Z is equal to Y, the line of equality, the 45 degree line. You're happy with that. So the next step is now to, to, to extend the Y line from figure B to figure C. To extend the Y line from figure B to figure, to figure C. So by extending the, the equilibrium level of income Y I had to figure, uh, to figure uh, C, we can plot the first point on the IS curve. So we drop the Y line and where, where it intersects the, 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 the Y line and that point is your first point on the IS curve in figure C. So A is your first point. So let's look at the flow again. At interest rate I0, your level of investment is I0 and the corresponding uh, the corresponding demand for goods in figure B is ZZ, and the ZZ curve cuts the 45 degree line at point A, which suggests that point at any point on the 45 degree line occurs when Z is equal to Y. So at point A, we drop that line, and we get your equilibrium level of income and output Y. So the next step is now to extend that line to, to diagram C. You drop the Y line, you, you extend your I0 your I line, and you get a point A where those two, two lines meet. So the A is your first point on the on the IS curve. So we have good, the goods market equilibrium at Y. We can conclude here that the goods market is in equilibrium 
at an interest rate of I0 and income level of Y. And let's assume in figure A, there's an increase in the interest rates. And in your mind, straight away, you must figure out now, if there's an increase in interest rates, what's going to happen, okay? You know that there's a negative relationship between interest rates and investments. The higher the interest rate, the lower the investments, right? because of the high cost of borrowing. So if interest rates go up to I1, it cuts, it cuts the investment function at a point, and you drop that line, and you get investment one. You'll find an increase in interest rates will cause a decrease in investments from I0 to I to I1 in figure A. So, so in figure B now, a decline in, in investments, you know, investments is investments in the goods market, eh? A decline in investment spending decreases the demand for goods. If investments drops, then the demand for goods are going to decrease. So the demand, so, so when, the, when the demand for goods decreases, the demand for goods curve will shift down towards ZZ1. So a decrease in investments will lead to a decrease in the demand for goods and services, and therefore the demand curve will, will be a result, result in a parallel downward shift in the demand curve from ZZ to ZZ1 because of the decrease in investments, which leads to a decrease in the demand for goods Z. It, it, it's reflected as a downward shift in the ZZ curve, a parallel downward shift in the ZZ curve to ZZ1. And you'll find that the new demand curve, ZZ1, cuts the 45 degree line at a new point. So we have a new equilibrium point, which is A1. Right? At point A1, Y is equal to Z. At A1, Y is equal to Z. And the goods market is in equilibrium at that point. The equilibrium level of income and output is now lower at Y1. And that makes sense because the investments dropped. And remember, the decline in output and income is, is, is a multiple of the decrease in investment spent and the multiplier effect. In all the things that we do now, guys, you will have that you must remember that the multiplier is always in operation. If there's a decrease in investments, in other words, your injection is lower, that's going to have a reverse effect on the level of income and uh, 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 greater than change in the level of income and output because of the multiplier. In other words, your level of income and output will decrease further because of, because of the multiplier. But the multiplier process is always in operation. So, so the good market equilibrium is, is ultimately at point A1 now. And your new, new, your, your new ZZ curve cuts the 45 degree line of A1. You drop that, you drop that line to Y1. That's your new equilibrium, equilibrium level of income and output Y1. You drop that line to, C, to, to, to figure C. Y1, and you extend the I1 line, the I1 line cuts the, the Y1 line at A1. is the next point on the highest curve. So we have two points, and we join these two points, we join A1 and A, and we get the IS curve. So that is the derivation of the IS curve. If you want a more accurate IS curve, and you repeat the same exercise by changing your interest rates to I2, or, or you understand, by changing your interest rates, and you will have a series of good market, good, good market equilibrium points, and you'll have more points in figure C, and you'll have a more accurate IS curve. It's, so, so therefore, you can see that the IS curve represents combinations of interest rates. See that I, I0, I1, combinations of interest rates and income levels, Y1 and Y0, Y, where the goods market is in equilibrium. See that right at the beginning. Your IS curve represents combinations of I and Y where the goods market is in equilibrium. And, and this is so given that all the, uh, the autonomous variables, all the other autonomous vari variables remain unchanged. Government spending, taxation, and, 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 and consumption. Derivation of the IS curve using, using certain values. We assume that investment spending is the only component of autonomous spending. Autonomous spending at an interest rate of 10% is 4,000. A decrease in interest rates from 12% to 10% increases investment spending by 2,000. The first, the first thing you need is find the value of A. The first, the first diagram on the left-hand side is your investment curve diagram. The second diagram on your right-hand side at the top is your goods market diagram. And at the bottom is your 
is your derivation of the IS curve diagram. So, and you've got autonomous spending at interest within state is 10%. The autonomous spending is 4,000 rands. A decrease in the interest rates from 12 to 10% increases investment spending by 2,000. So, what is A? Where is A? A is in, in, A is in figure, in investment figure on the, horizon, on the horizontal axis. What is the value for A? Come on. Read the information at the top. On the vertical axis, we've got interest rates, right? 10% and 12%. At 12%, your, 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 your level of investment is 2,000. At 10% now, what, I mean, what is your investment? It tells you there, your autonomous spending at an interest rate of 10% is 4,000. There's your interest rate 10% in, in, in the first figure. You take it straight across to the investment and you drop it to A, 4,000. So application of theory is extremely important. Okay, so, so A is, A is, is 4,000. 4, so the, the second question is, calculate the value of the multiplier. It's five. Yeah, tell us how you got five. Um, it's, it's one over one minus C. Good. So all you have to do is substitute. So go ahead now. It's one divided by one minus 0 0.8, yes. which is one divided by 0 0.2. Correct. And gives you five. Good. Okay. So we know that the multiplier is five. Everybody's okay with that. The third question. Calculate the value of B. Now, if it will help you, you can calculate C at the same time. Calculate C at the same time. Remember C is, is a curve. It is an autonomous component for the demand curve on the top. It should have been Z1, okay? And B is the bottom bottom demand curve, Z. Anybody want to try? If you give me an answer, I will guide you and help you. What is B? Quickly. So B B represents the demand, the original demand for goods and services, right? So at an interest rate of 10%, at an interest rate of 10% on the vertical axis in the first diagram, the question is, what is what is your level of investment at 10%? At 12%, we know the investment is 2%, 20, uh, 2,000 rands. At an interest rate of 10%, autonomous spending is equal to what? 4,000. 4,000. So therefore, what is, what, is, what is the value of C then? At 12%, given in the question, right, uh, autonomous spending at an interest rate of 10% is 4,000. Right? So, so the value for C is 4,000. In other words, at an interest rate of 10%, autonomous spending is equal to 4,000, which is now given in the, in the, in the top. The autonomous spending is 4,000, so then your, your, B, your, your autonomous component is 4,000. That's given to you. Now, what about B? A decrease in the interest rates from 12 to 10% 10 increases investment by 2,000. Two, Therefore, you've got to work backwards. You've got to work backwards to get B. Therefore, working backwards from you minus 2,000 from 4,000, and B will be 2,000. In other words, you're going to work backwards now to get the, uh, the investment spending. The, your investment spending will be C is 4,000. We know that. Now, to, to get value for B, you got to work backwards. 4,000 minus the 2,000 to give you 2,000 rands. So B will be 2,000. And we know now that the value of B is 2,000, right? At an interest rate of 10%, autonomous spending is equal to the interest rate of 10%. Autonomous spending is 4,000. It's given to us and we calculated that already. A decrease in interest rate from 12 to 10% increases the investment spending by 2,000. Therefore, working backwards, you go to minus the 2,000 from 4,000 and your B will be 2,000. It can't be more than 4,000. You go, you go on the vertical axis, B should be lower than C. It must be, I mean, it, it makes common sense that B will be lower than C. So if C is 4,000, B will be a lower figure. And in this example, you, you're going to work backwards. 4,000 minus 2,000 will give you 2,000. What is the value for D? What will affect Y? The multiplier. So we know that the multiplier is 5. So now go ahead with your, with your calculations. What influences Y? Your multiplier. An initial injection will lead to a greater than change in the level of income and output. Why so? Because of the multiplier. 
because of the impact of the multiplier. So now give me an answer to D. Is it 10,000? Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm really excited. Now, how did you get 10,000? Uh, I've used the multiplier. I've, I've, I've used uh, the multiplier. It's five. Then I take that five. I multiply it by, by B, the autonomous consumption for B. Then I've got 10,000. Let's we'll talk a little bit about D. To calculate D, you must multiply your autonomous spending with the yes. multiplier, which you did. The autonomous spending is 2,000 times the multiplier, which is 5, will give you 10,000. So the, the formula is yes. multiply the autonomous spending times the multiplier. And now calculate E. I've got 20,000 there. That's correct. So it's 4,000. Your autonomous spending is 4,000 times the multiplier of 5 will give you 20,000. So okay. to calculate D, the autonomous spending was 2,000. The 2,000 times 5, which is the multiplier, gives you 10,000. For E, again, the same formula, the same thing will apply. Autonomous spending times the multiplier. Here, the autonomous spending is now 4,000. Your, 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 your intercept is now 4,000. C is 4,000. So it's 4,000 times the multiplier of 5, which will give you 20,000. So what will F be, straight away, before you even calculate? What, what will F be? 10%. You can see there in the first diagram. What is G? G is 12%. G is 12%. Now calculate H for me. H and I. Start with H. H is the same value as D. Correct. Why? Tell me why. Um, uh, to derive the the graph, we use the same interest rate and the same uh, income from the previous graph. Yeah. We so combine the we combine the first two graphs to give us the last graph. Yeah. So, so in other words, you extend F, which is ten percent. You drop the D line, which is which is which is which is which is twenty thousand, isn't that so? Ten thousand, is it? Yes. What did he was? Yes, it's ten thousand. Ten thousand. So you drop yes. that line, and H will obviously be the same. It must be the same, which is ten thousand. Yes, and then it's four thousand multiplied 20, by five. Twenty. It's twenty multiplied by the multiplier is twenty thousand. Yes, twenty thousand. So it's four thousand times the multiplier four five is twenty, isn't that so? So I is twenty thousand. Yes. Same as E. Yes. And that will give you a second point yes. on the on the IS curve, right? You drop your you extend your G line, you drop your E line, you get your second point on the IS curve, right? You'll find that you 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 join you join the, the, the two dot, lines, the, the two the lines you, you get your IS curve. So 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 be done with this. You understand it. Right? There's the question there's I want you to look at the answers. All right, let's go there. Here we, now we're going to look at we look at we looked at movements along the IS curve. Now let's look at now what happens when there are shifts in the IS curve. A shift in the IS curve is caused by a change in the autonomous factor, like government spending, like investments, right? like consumption. So a shift in the IS curve will occur as a result of a change in autonomous factors. And, the, and you know that the autonomous factors will change the Demand for goods and good goods, and the equilibrium level of income will change as well. A movement along the IS curve is caused by a change in the interest rates. Movement up and down will be a change in the interest rates. If there's an increase in interest rates, there will be an upward movement along the IS curve. If there's a decrease in the interest rates, there will be a downward movement along the IS curve. If there is an increase increase in government spending, there will be a rightward shift in the IS curve. If there's a decrease in government spending, there will be a left and left and shift in the IS curve. The autonomous components will cause shifts in the curve. Your interest rate changes in interest rates will cause movements along the curve. Because will cause movements along the curve. Now let's compare points on the IS curve. On the vertical axis, we've got interest rates. On the horizontal axis, we've got your levels of income and output. A movement from point A to B, right? It's a downward movement. So in other words, at an interest rate of I1, it cuts the highest curve at point A, and your level of income and output is Y1. If your interest rates drop to I2, in other words, if it decreases from I1 to I2, right, it will now cut the highest curve at a lower point, which is, which is B. If you drop that line, you get Y2. So clearly, 
a decrease in, in interest rates from I, I1 to I2 will lead to an increase in income from Y1 to Y. We said this early on, from Y1 to Y2. And if you look at the, if you look at the physical change, and you see the, 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 the magnitude of the change in the interest rates and the magnitude of the change in Y. The one is bigger than the other, isn't that so? The size of the change is different, why? Because of the multiplier, because of the multiplier, okay? So, so let's read at the bottom, move from point A to point B, indicates that as the interest rate declines, investment spending, consumption spending, and the demand for goods and services and the equilibrium level of income will, will increase. As well as the equilibrium level of income and output will increase. All of that will increase because of the decrease in in interest rate. But simply because it simply means that the cost of borrowing is lower. Therefore, your, your investment spending will increase, consumption spending will increase, demand for goods will increase, the equilibrium level of income and output will increase from Y1 to Y2. Now let's see what, what happens with a shift in the in the IS curve. So we said uh, the a uh, change in the autonomous component will cause a shift in the curve. It could be government spending, it could be investment spending, it could be consumption spending. In this particular example, we talk about an increase in G. So G we know is government spending. So if your interest rate doesn't change, it remains same, the same. So at, at the interest rate I, an increase in the original spending was IS1. Now with an increase in government spending, and we said just now, an increase in, in increase in the autonomous component G will lead to a shift in the curve. Since this is this is an increase, there will be a rightward shift in the in the IS curve from IS1 to IS2. So the the the, the I line cuts the IS2 at a point. You drop that line, you'll find that your level of income and output increases from Y1 to Y2. Increase in government spending increases the demand for goods and level of income and output increases. All right, good night, guys. I'll see you in two weeks' time.